there's a stirring in the house. And like the woman with the issue with blood who said, if I can just reach my Savior, my answer is there in a touch. His grace and His mercy isn't meant to be for only one who is quick enough, but for all who believe. If there was a theme for this morning, it is there is a stirring. There is a stirring going on. And uh, a couple weeks ago, before I could even begin to preach, there, it was just a stirring in my heart to pray for a particular individual that was in the service. And as I wrestled with this stirring in my heart, I had my own agenda. And that was my agenda was to preach this message that I had prepared. And this stirring was to pray for a particular individual. And, and I just, as I'm, my mind is racing, I'm having my conversation with myself and with the Lord, and, and I just said, well, Lord, I don't, do you want me to just pray right now to myself before I preach? And the stirring just says, pray for that individual. And I, well, do you want me to pray out loud and have him in his seat while I'm up here and just pray for that individual? Well, Lord, do you want me to call him forward and call him out in front of her? Just pray for that individual. Uh, there was just this stirring in my heart and what was the amazing is that same moment in St. Joe, after the service, Pastor Luke called me and said, there was just something about this weekend and a stirring in my heart we were preaching on, you need to have a savings account. He goes, but when I'm at my desk, I opened up the drawer and I pulled out the anointing oil and I put it in my pocket in case there was something that was going to happen because there was a stirring. So when I heard of what happened with you in Battle Creek at the same time, I was just amazed at this stirring. And then I realized there's been a stirring of God that has been moving and stirring for quite some time. That there was a, there's been a stirring in our community and in people's lives. That this missions trip that just took place this week, there, there was just this stirring on the hearts of the students. And you saw on social media the work projects they did, but maybe wasn't as highlighted was what was happening when they were back here spending the night in the church and doing a 24-hour prayer vigil through the night. And, worshiping, confessing, repenting. These events we have called the journey and the return over the past year, if you have been blessed to be one of the men or the women over the last two years, there's been a stirring. And marriages that had no hope are just under a covering of blessing and healing and joy and restoration and men and women just dealing with stuff in their lives, finally finding freedom and healing. There's a stirring going on in our midst. And this service is being given to just pause and to bring your attention to the stirring because we think revival has this huge attention but there's revival that is taking place. Over 500 people gave their lives to Jesus in the first six months of this year. Revival is taking place. People are hearing God for the first time. Revival is taking place in this house. There's a stirring of God and one of the things life and the enemy would love to do is to keep us distracted on other things and worries and stress that we miss the stirring of God that's going on in our place, or even worse, we get desensitized to it because we see it all the time. And there's a stirring going on. In John chapter 5, Jesus is walking through the gates by the pool of Bethesda. And he asks a man if he wants to be healed. Now what's interesting 
is if you look at that scripture, the verses go one, two, three, five, six, seven. They skip verse four. Verse four is taken out. Verse four in all translations, but one has a little asterisk. And I'm reading, I go one, two, three, five. What happened to four? And four was taken out because they found an earlier manuscript that John wrote and it wasn't included in that. And what it was is the Pool of Bethesda in verse 4 says that from time to time the sick and the lame would gather around the Pool of Bethesda and an angel of the Lord would stir the pool waters and the first one in it would be healed. And they realized that that was actually a conjecture and it was a kind of a superstition of the time that those waters that they boiled that meant a healing. And so they took that verse out because it doesn't reflect or is consistent with the heart of God in the sense that when God moves, he will not force his people to compete for the one prize. But the nature of God is that when he moves, it's available for all that have faith and are hungry to receive. There's a stirring in the house. And like the woman with the issue with blood, who said, if I can just reach my Savior, my answer is there in a touch. His grace and his mercy isn't meant to be for only one who is quick enough, but for all who believe. And so I'm going to invite Eileen up, and um, the way this service is going to go is throughout this week, there's been things on our hearts that we are going to be praying for. And if that, is, if that pertains to you, you're invited to either raise your hand or to stand to receive that. There, there's a... There's something about pressing in like the woman with the issue of blood, of reaching out, of going forward. When Jesus asked the, the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda, do you want to be healed? He gave an excuse why he couldn't. And he said, there's nobody here to put me in the water. So Jesus said, I, I'll come to you then. Pick up your mat and walk. But he needed to ask for it and to want it. The woman with the issue of blood needed to press through. And so as we begin to pray for the needs that God has put on our hearts that we feel the Holy Spirit wants to respond to, uh, I want to encourage you with a couple of things as we call out different things to either just stand up and receive that. But I'm also going to invite all the pastors and elders, if you're in this service, to come forward. And I'm going to have you just stand along the front here. And we really want to encourage you to come forward and let the elders anoint you with oil. Does this make sense? All right, so pastors, elders, come on up and have, have you stand right here. I've got some anointing oil there. Uh, Father, we give you this service. We're thankful, Lord, for the stirring that's in our hearts. And that, Father, that as your people seek you, that you will reveal yourself as the God that moves today, that you make yourself available, Father. So I'm going to let Eileen just start off here by praying and ministering. And again, you can stay in your seats or stand to receive it when she calls it out. Or even your third choice is just come forward and go, boy, that's me. And have one of these elders, pastors, anoint you with oil. That was me. What Eileen just mentioned, that's me. And I'd just like you to lay hands on me and pray for me, okay? And we stay in this heart. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Summer's going to share a word before I share mine. I think it's going to just be uh, perfect timing for that. So Summer, go ahead. During worship, during worship, I just had this sense that God wanted us to know that he's available, mm. that God is available, that, he's, um, that God is attainable, and that as we... Just take a small step to call out to him. Um, like, I just got this image of just, just slowly bringing my arm up just to reach out to him and to lay something down to him or to call on his name. And he's just running. <laughs> like, it's not hard. 
it's, it's so simple. He makes it so simple that he sacrificed himself for us so that he could be attainable, easily available and attainable. And in Psalm 145, 18, it says, The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He's close. He's attainable. He's near. I just thought that was a beautiful way to um, to begin. So the word that God put on my heart this week as I was praying for you all was uh, anybody that's struggling with grief. So grief can be a few different things. You know, we we automatically think grief is the loss of the loss of someone that we love, which that is definitely a grief that we experience. So I'm inviting that um, for prayer. The other thing that can cause grief is any change, a major change in your life that can cause grief. Um, something that um, is just um, not not the same. You know, I I hate to bring up COVID, but there was a loss during that time. There might be a change that you experienced that you're just not quite over. And so anything that, that, that just resonates with you, if, if any of you that just resonates as far as, boy, I, I'm grieving something. I'm grieving the loss of someone, something, a change in my life. I want to pray for you right now. And sometimes we're not aware that we are in a season of grief. We might think that happened a long time ago. But we can get stuck in a season of grief. So we could be stuck in depression, anger. We could even be stuck in denial. Hey, I'm fine. Ship shape. Nothing's wrong with me. But God wants to minister to that. God doesn't want you to stay in that. And sometimes that becomes our identity. Um, That grief or that depression or that anger becomes our identity. And that's not God's best for you. That is not what God wants for you. So if they're just a minute. <laughs> does this identify with anybody what she's saying? If this does stand up. You can up. just stand yeah, up, stand raise up your hand. Stand up and receive it. Still stand up and receive yeah. it. We're all family. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us. I know it feels kind of vulnerable to just stand up or raise your hand or admit or, you know, acknowledge that. But when we put light on things, the enemy has to flee. And so that's what we want to do. We want to put light on it. We want, to, we want God to minister and heal and restore. So if that's you, um, I'm going to give you one last you know, opportunity to stand or raise your hand, and then I'm just going to pray for you. Some of you are coming forward. Um, just feel free to do that. But if not, just stay right where you're at, and I'm going to just pray for you, okay? Well, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us, Father. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings hope. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that that sheds light. Father God, we can sometimes have blinders on and not even realize what's going on. And we thank you that you're putting light on that, Father God. And so we just thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that ministers grace and peace healing, restoration, Father God. So I pray for everyone standing, everyone um, in this room or listening that is, um, that is experiencing grief in any form. And Father, I pray healing in your precious name. I pray healing in the name of Jesus. I pray grace and peace. Father God, I just thank you that your Holy Spirit heals and restores. And Father God, I pray against anger. I pray against depression. Father God, I pray against denial. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just very sweetly minister to these precious people, that they would, their hope would be restored. Father God, We just thank you. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to keep next level in here if you're still in here. 
next level, you cool with that? You, you, next level sees God minister like this at kids camp. So this is right up their alley. So we're gonna invite next level to just hang with us on this service uh, here. And um, in fact, next level, I'm gonna give you the choice. If you wanna hang here, you can. Otherwise, if you wanna be real quietly and just slide out there, there is a teacher out there for you as well. Um, Eric Hansen, you're back there, right? I can't miss that shirt, brother. All week, God has put you on my heart to pray for. Could I have you come forward? And we want to anoint you with oil in April. If you want to come up with him, uh, I'm going to have you come over to Pastor John. Um, Eric is in need of a kidney transplant. Can I share this, Eric? Yeah, it's a little gates the horses out of the gate already, so thank you, yeah. Um, and I believe you're doing dialysis daily, which is very fatiguing. And so we want God to do a miracle in this moment. We want God to show off and get all the glory in this moment. And be sure to anoint Angela too. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as you have impressed upon my heart to pray for this couple, Lord Jesus, I pray for a miracle healing of this man's kidneys, whether it's through a donor that he has been praying for and, and calling out for, or whether, whether right now in this moment, Holy Spirit, that these kidneys become obedient to the word of God that says that by your stripes we are healed. We proclaim healing in the name of Jesus over this man and over this couple and that you would receive all glory in Jesus' name. And while we've prayed for this, is there anybody else that has kidney issues? Raise your hand if you would like to be prayed for. Uh, you can even do it right from your seat. Okay. In fact, if you raised your hand, would you mind just standing where you're at? Just standing up. Uh, and that just, it's easier for me to see in these lights here. Uh, good. Anybody else that goes, yeah, I, I want prayer. I've got kidney issues. Uh, just stand. I'm going to include you in this prayer. i got kidney issues. And when I'm done praying, at any point, if you want to come forward and have the elders anoint you, that, that's available. Or even as I'm praying now. But uh, I'm just going to have you good. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just, I feel there's a special anointing you have in this house, in this moment for this need. And so for those that are standing, being ministered to, Father, as they stand as a proclamation of pressing through the crowd, pressing through uh, any, un any unforgiveness or uh, hopelessness or pride, Father, as they stand as a sign of pressing in to receive, I pray healing on their bodies in the name of Jesus over their kidneys, Father, that you would heal and restore in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I just pray for Dave Kerwin's hearing, that you would give even clarity of hearing to a new level, that he would just go, wow, when he, when he heard the difference, Lord that it would just allow him for this purpose to even more effectively minister, that this would just be your gift to equip him for the, uh, the calling that you've equipped him for to minister uh, into other men. So heal, heal that in Jesus' name. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like there's, um, might be somebody here with, um, I'm gonna, just going to say an un- diagnosable condition. So um, you're struggling with symptoms. They don't know what it is. Um, you're just struggling with symptoms and you don't know what it is. You Maybe you haven't been to a doctor, maybe you have, um, but just kind of some symptoms that are just hanging on. And I just, I just want to pray for that. So is there anybody um, that that resonates with or is that okay? Yep. Super. All right. Very good. Okay. Super. All right. Thank you, Father. All right. Well, Father, we just pray uh, healing 
health restoration over these people. Father God, we pray you would give them or their doctors wisdom beyond their earthly knowledge just to identify uh, whatever this is. Father God, uh, we pray against fear. We pray against hopelessness. We pray against um, a bad report. Father, and Father, we just pray for supernatural healing. Father God, we also pray for just natural wisdom as to maybe uh, simple things that might be causing this that are just going unnoticed or undiagnosed. Father God, it might be a food allergy. It might be um, a, a habit, uh, an addiction, something, Father God, something that they're just not necessarily a bad thing they're addicted to, but something they just are addicted to. Uh, Father, so I just pray, I just pray healing, restoration, wisdom beyond their earthly knowledge. Father God, we pray you would just uh, receive all the glory, just a miraculous healing in Jesus' name. Amen. This one's my favorite one. I'm gonna, I want to pray for uh, couples. You've had a challenge getting pregnant. You, you've been, it's on your heart. I want to be very careful here uh, because I understand that this is just a, an emotional roller coaster for couples. You're, you're frustrated, you're discouraged, and, and maybe you're just thinking, hey, we're just ready to start a family. And there's been no issues, but you're, it, what's on my heart is um, we want to start a family, and chances, and really, it's been difficult or it hasn't happened. But for couples that are going, we we just we're ready to have a family, start a family, and um, it's been difficult getting pregnant. Um, I am going to ask you to raise your hand. Is that okay? Just to receive that. Does that, am I, does that speak to anybody? I'm going to pray because maybe, maybe it wasn't good to ra- ask you to raise your hand. What? No? It might be online too. Okay. And I also want to encourage if, if that's you, I love praying for this. And for some reason, God just lets, God, I, I have like five, I'm five for five on this one where, where doctors said it ain't going to happen. And it happens. But, you know, I just want to be sensitive to that. I love praying for this. We've got miracle babies. Uh, Rayma James. One is named Rayma James because I had a word. You're going to get pregnant. And she did. <laughs> and so, good. I hand there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are the author of life. You give life. You control life. You create life. You breathe life. So, Father, for the couples that are struggling, I pray first for your peace to settle on. I bind worry and stress in the name of Jesus and the effects that it has on the body. But Father, I pray that they would have a measure of faith to relax and to trust in your goodness for who you are and not for what you do. To trust and to relax in who you are and not what you do. And Father, I pray for just the the gift, that anointing, that fruit in the womb, Father God, I pray that it is released in the name of Jesus. I pray for babies, I pray for life. And Father, we bind any discouraging word that science might be saying, but we put our hope and our trust in you. Let us strive to be next to you more than anything. But Father, I pray for blessings of life now in the name of Jesus. All right, I have two. And the first one I'm going to say is just struggling with your identity in Christ. And that is I don't feel like I'm a daughter of the king. I don't feel like I'm a son of the Mm -hmm. king. It's just identity in any form, but it's just I'm struggling to believe 
I'm struggling to receive my identity in Christ fully as um, the, the daughter of the King of Kings, the son of the King of Kings. So um, sometimes uh, that's just a struggle. Uh, things can be spoken over us. We can um, believe wrong things, but we have to believe what God says about us. So I'd like to just pray a blessing and over anyone that's struggling with that. Could I just submit that to you? If there's anybody, just kind of raise your hand or, okay. All right, good, thank you. All right, I'm just going to pray. Father, we just thank you. Father, I just pray a blessing over anyone in this room that is struggling with their identity in Christ. Father God, I pray that uh, the true uh, identity as the son of the most living high, King of kings, the Lord of lords, would just resonate in their heart and soul, Father God. Uh, I pray that anyone in here, any women in here that are just struggling with that, that they would understand completely and fully just a revelation of who they are, that they are the daughter of the most sovereign high, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray against any words that were spoken over them, any words um, and thoughts, any um, proclamations over them, that they are not that. I pray against that in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would fill them with your truth, that you would fill them with um, your promises and their identity, their true identity, that it would just be a complete revelation of, um, of who they are in Christ. And Father God, I pray against the enemy that would come to steal that identity. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your truth, for your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And I have one. Can I do one more? Oh, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this one is, um, I'll, I'll be kind of concise on this one, but um, sometimes uh, we can just have a hard time reading God's word. Um, I'm just going to pray for that. Anybody that's kind of struggling, it's like, I feel like I'm hitting a wall. I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying to read. I'm trying to, um, you know, be in God's word. There's just something, almost something stopping you, it feels like, or something coming against you or just a block. Oh. Is there anybody that that resonates stand with? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up if that's yep, you. Stand up. There's no shame in this. It's just, we're going to put light on it. We're going to just tell the enemy he's got no, no business with you. So, um, so I'm just going to pray. One of the things I do uh, real quickly is I listen to uh, YouVersion Bible. Uh, I pick the one I like to hear the voice, you know, whatever. But I try to, you know, just do that. But I listen to it. And every time I turn it on, I put an earbud in. I listen to it all day long. But I just say before I start, God, let this, let your word restore and heal me in Jesus name and then I just turn it on while I'm driving while I'm you know doing whatever that I don't have to interact with people and and I'm just gonna submit that to you that that might be something to help you because you're getting the word in and it heals and restores mm -hmm. and brings life okay so I'm gonna pray for you Father God we just thank you for these um, precious people of yours that just desperately want to be in your word but something is just hindering them so I pray that you would give them revelation as to what that is, Father God. If it's something they need to shift or correct or let go of or, um, you know, uh, deal with, Father God, we just pray you just bring that to their understanding and to their mind, Father God. But, Father God, I pray against the enemy that would try to steal, kill, and destroy any attempt they have to be in your word because your word brings life, and they know that. And the enemy knows that. But we just pray right now that they would just be faithful in little, faithful in much. That they would start and just be faithful to your word, but that you would meet them there, Father God. And that you would um, show yourself faithful, Father God. Help them to um, just uh, be in your word. And um, Father God, we just thank you for what you're going to do in their life, Father God. And we know that your word is going to bring life to them and res restoration and healing. And so we thank you for their passion and their desire to be in your word. And we pray mm -hmm. that you would help them in that area in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got two more. 
and this is the big one, if, if you are struggling with any form of cancer, this one I'm going to have you stand up and come forward to have the prayer team pray with you and anoint you with oil. Anybody dealing with cancer, stand up right now. Just stand up, come forward. Stand up, come forward. Any, any type of cancer, any type of cancer. There's a stirring. Don't miss this. Press through the crowd. I just want to encourage you. Come forward. Uh, find one of the teams here. They're going to anoint you with oil, and I'm going to pray, and they're going to be in agreement. Anybody, that, uh, any form of cancer. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bind and curse cancer in the name of Jesus. And Father, we cast it out of these bodies in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we pray for a complete, restored healing. We bind cancer and cast it out of these bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for supernatural, miraculous healing in the name of Jesus. Father, give doctors and medicine, give, give them wisdom, give them discernment. Father, whatever you choose, we proclaim the blood of Jesus over the temple of these people's bodies and that Satan and cancer has no right to live or to occupy, and we cast it out in the name of Jesus. We pray against any discouragement. We pray for hope. We pray for faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a rhema word to be dropped into hearts of each of these people that rather than believing the lies of the enemy, they have a word of life to hold on to and to proclaim and to hold back the, this curse in Jesus' name. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, maybe you're new, maybe you're visiting today. All I know is the more desperate a heart gets, the more it needs to see God be real. And if that describes you, God wants to show himself to be real to you. And there's one question every heart needs to have answered for God to reveal himself fully to you. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to answer and be involved and empower you through the challenges and the struggles. But you've got to be willing to surrender and let him. And there's one question every heart needs. I'm going to keep the altar team here also. Just stay here. There's one question every heart needs answered. And that is, is my heart right with God? And if you're here going, I hope so, or I think so, today you can know for sure. Because the Bible says in Romans, those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And what that means, there's got to be a defining moment in our lives where we didn't believe, just believe in God or try to do good, but we surrender ourselves and we say, Jesus, come into my life, rescue me, and I give you full control. And if you don't have a moment like that, this is your moment right now. This is the greatest miracle you'll ever witness. And so I'm going to count to three. And if you're here today and you're saying, I don't know if my heart's right with God, but today I want to know for sure, include me in the prayer. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand real quick. One, two, three. That's me. Awesome. I see that hand there. I see that hand there. There's two hands. If you'd keep your hand up, because I want to give you some information. It's kind of dark. Another hand over here. Another hand over here. Awesome. I don't know if my heart's right with God, but today I want to know, include me in this prayer. This is the greatest miracle of all. And just raise your hand if you haven't already. I want to give you some information to help you. Awesome. Well, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, it says you'll be saved. What a beautiful promise that is. And that's what we're going to do right now. And so if you raise your hand you meant to, just pray this prayer out loud in church if you'd pray along for encouragement and pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe you died on the cross, that you rose again, and you're seated on the throne. Jesus, forgive me for all that I've done wrong. And I choose to forgive all others. Come into my life today and forever. I am yours in Jesus' name. Hey, thank you for watching Victory Life Church on YouTube. 
I want you to subscribe so that you know when we go live or when we post new content. And also, leave me a comment and let me know how today's message spoke to you or where you're watching from or even how we can be praying for you. And if you would like to financially support the ministry, just click the link below. God bless you and thank you for joining us today.